feeling, hey, has anybody tried to actually set goals and been thwarted by the website not working? Correct. So, <laughs> so um, please do not stress yourselves. If it's the website's problems, send your goals to your AG and our AGs are successfully accessing or to me and we'll get them in for you. We want to eliminate stress. It does seem to be working for me. So we had um, somebody who might be uh, Jeff Sexauer, uh, Bob Allen's president-elect. He was trying his hardest and I was doing it live and he was doing it live and he could not, he could not enter. Sometimes it's an access problem if you're not actually in Rotary International, but the portal itself sometimes gets jammed. So rest assured that we DGs are saying, please Rotary spend what it takes to make the website work because it's not like that's going away anytime soon. And then um, I, I also noticed that they do a lot of updating or work on the website over the weekend. So the weekend is actually not a good time to try to get on and, and, and upload your goals. It's probably better to do that during the week. Yeah, but anyway, don't stress yourself. Just communicate with me and I'll enter them for you happily. I'm happy to help you that way. All right, um, we'll get started here in like one minute. Um, so I think we're, we're pretty close. What does it say here? Nine, were we 10 or 12, um, Karen? I thought we had for the RSVPs. So we're, we're close. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Some people might be late yesterday. It happens, but yeah, we, had, we had a really, really good, a really good time yesterday. Uh, and I anticipate that we will this morning too. Thanks Great. for joining us. Well, okay. uh, I'm gonna you wanna, yeah, you. go ahead and kick yeah. off, Karen. Right. Uh, so, so it would be really nice if we took a little time to get to know each other, uh, but we don't have time for that. So uh, if you're engaged in conversation, you want to follow up with one another afterwards, just put your email in chat or let me know, hey, I want to talk with Kathy. Just let me know. We'll connect you. And uh, if I took every single lead of the off and just had the handout that is so appropriate for this moment in, in DGE life and, and, and your president-elect life. So I'm gonna turn it right over to Jason. Thank you so much for your service to us, Jason. Thank you, Karen. Um, so um, as we get started, uh, just a few ground rules, you know, go ahead and mute your mics um, just to keep it quieter on the call. Uh, go ahead and uh, raise your hand or use the hand raise feature if you have a question that pops up. Uh, Karen will help uh, watch for that for me. Um, I'm going to spotlight my video here a little bit to make it easier. Oops. What did I just do? <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. I actually turned myself off, which wasn't a good one. Uh, so now you should see my slides a little larger on your screen. Uh, please keep your video on, have uh, something on hand to write with, plan to participate in the discussions. We're gonna do uh, two breakout uh, sessions during uh, our hour together. And uh, please try to stay for the whole session. Um, obviously, you know, if you have to run off for work, that's uh, understandable. We're gonna do our best to try to wrap up right at eight o'clock. Uh, so can people, people can get on with their uh, day and lawn mowing uh, and everything else that we all need to do, right, Robin? So um, I am Jason Barron. I'm the uh, past president of the Downtown Rotary Club. And during my year as president um, and past president and even um, serving on some special committees, there's been a lot of goals um, our club has had that required uh, major change efforts. Um, our club has navigated recently through uh, major change in dues where our um, uneaten meals used to subsidize a lot of our operational budget. Well, without with COVID, there was there were no meals, and so um, that led to some uh, financial strains, and we needed to make a change quickly. Uh, the other thing our club um, has been involved with for about three years now, um, and I was one of the presidents who helped lead us through a multi-year um, RE and I, which is racial equity and inclusion initiatives, um, and and 
you know, through that process, we did a lot of uh, the things that you will see in these handouts. I do need to give credit. This course was originally um, conceived by a district out in New York. Uh, Dean Ryerson from our district um, grabbed onto it, and Dean and I presented uh, an original version of this back at PETS um, two two years ago. So it's um, even the chain, the course on change and implementing your goals is changing and evolving. I also. Um, in addition to Rotary, I'm involved in leading and managing volunteers uh, for the Ironman Triathlon Series. I work uh, three to five races a year as a swim course coordinator where I uh, organize and train all the swim safety volunteers at an Ironman event. And um, one of my more um, memorable uh, goal initiatives was a race in uh, Michigan, Benton Harbor, St. Joe's, Michigan. For 20 years, they ran the race where you swam from one point to another point. It was a 1.2 mile swim course. And from the safety perspective, we were really spread out. Um, my team had an idea of how we could change it and make the race um, more uh, uh, safe and, and use, user and fan friendly. Uh, however, uh, we needed to convince the the locals that um, this was the way to uh, the way to go. And uh, one of the things we'll talk about in the and this is um, collaborative commitment. And one of the ways I helped collaborate and implement the change was to recruit a change champion, um, a gentleman named Fred, who was like uh, the legendary um, elder triathlon. Um, guy in that in that community. I think uh, he was in his uh, early 70s and had been doing triathlons for 30 years and might have done 150 of these Ironman. By getting Fred on board with me, um, it really helped me push that that goal that change through. So um, our, our learning objective today is to help you implement the goals you have as president to Lex. And we're going to do that through change management. So Almost every goal you'll have um, will require some change in your club. And that's why Karen thought that this um, class would be so appropriate um, in helping you as you are formulating your goals and look to implement your goals over your year as club president. So Rotary, right from the beginning, knew that change was important. Uh, here's a quote from Paul Harris, who um, early on said that, you know, Rotary's story needs to be written over and over again, and we, we must be prepared to ch adapt and change Rotary as time goes on. So wouldn't it be great? I like this picture. Um, you as um, president elect uh, have a goal, and everyone, like, grabs hands and smiles and says, let's do it. Well, you know, that that doesn't always happen. A lot of times you need to build the case for change. And so we're gonna talk about that a little more. Also, you know, you may run into some naysayers, um, some mines and some roadblocks. So what we would like to do, oops, I missed one slide here. So why do people resist change? You know, some people doubt that maybe we're really serious about it. Um, maybe they say, well, it, it's, it's, what we're doing now is fine. It, it's, it's been working. For instance, the example I gave where my club was um, living off of uneaten meals, uh, which isn't um, uncommon for larger clubs. And, you know, if we didn't change it, we'd, we'd be in really tough financial stretch, uh, situations. However, however, a lot of club, club members didn't really know or understand how our club was budgeted. So we had to do a lot of education in implementing that change. People sometimes wonder, well, no one tells us what's going on and how might this impact to me? So why do people resist change? Um, sometimes they're intimidated um, by the change. Sometimes people can feel forced, um, that the change was forced on them and they didn't have any um, input into the decision. And then um, sometimes you need to think about, you know, what kind of introductory or training you might wanna uh, provide to help your club move forward to accomplish your goal. So what we'd like to do now is um, I'm gonna set up um, probably three breakout groups. Uh, 
And we're going to go into these breakout sessions for approximately eight minutes. And what I'd like you to do in your group is um, talk about one of these three scenarios. And I will I will chat the three scenarios to you here right now. Get over to the chat. Um, during this breakout, what we would like you to discuss is pick one of these um, scenarios and then discuss the minds and obstacle, obstacles you perceive that a president-elect may encounter in trying to implement these scenarios. So again, during this breakout session, um, focus on what obstacles and minds that you perceive might happen as a president-elect trying to implement uh, one of these scenarios. And then we're gonna come back together um, and I'd like each group to report back on some of the key insights that uh, uh, you gleaned from your conversations. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the breakout groups here. Bob really Wonder wanted to be with you, Karen. He hit the wrong button, he told me. And yeah, it, he did. it wasn't not the, first, the not first time, not the last time. <laughs> Well, he had already made plenty of great contributions. Well, Bob, since you were you were first back, um, Bob, Bethany, and Karen were in group uh, three. Um, so what scenario did your group pick group three? And what were some key takeaways, uh, minds and obstacles you discussed? Well, we were, we were talking about the president's goal is to plan a series of socials to attract younger community leaders. And, uh, you know, primarily, <clears throat> uh, we, we felt like the leadership was very important. I I'm, didn't write everything down, so. <laughs> but the le leadership in, in uh, making sure everybody knows that we're one and we have to kind of pull together on these things, what's important to the club, and so why are we doing this? You know, so that they're engaged in why, this, why it's happening, not that it's going to happen. Um, so it's inclu an inclusive type of thing. That's great, Bob. Um, Renee Mo, president of the uh, Dane County United Way, um, always says, you know, you need to share the vision and, and give it away. And the, the better you can share your vision for your goal and, and, you know, build a team of people who can share it for you, the easier it'll be to implement those goals. Um, anything else from other group three members to add or will we can... Well, just to not, not to be negative, but to de define it as like the obstacles is the yeah. people that don't want things to change can be a wet blanket and dampen the effort, dampen the enthusiasm and <clears throat> withhold resources too. So um, that's the that's the challenge. And I think we've all experienced it. So it's good to learn, be in this class. Yep. Anticipating um, um potential problems that people might have with the goal and addressing those can help uh, um, eliminate some of those wet blankets. So room two was uh, Brian, Gary, and Kirk. Uh, what <laughs> scenario did you guys pick and what were some um, challenges that you anticipated in implementing that scenario? We ended up picking number two as group two. So uh, we, um, talked a little bit about um, how with a volunteer participation being down, maybe it's the date and time that's wrong for newer members. They've got family, et cetera. Um, they're too busy to maybe make it. So yeah, that's one of the obstacles. Um, maybe your event has a history of bad weather. So people are like, why do I want to go up there in the rain again this year? That kind of thing. Um, you know, they weren't part of the planning. So they think, why are you now asking me to volunteer for something that I, that I haven't been a part of at all? And maybe another thing is if you're changing to a different volunteer event, they're like, I don't have any experience in that area. So maybe other people should do it, that kind of thing. Lots of obstacles, lots of mindsets that you need to change. Great, thank you, Gary. So then group one, um, Kathy, Robin, and Shar, uh, which scenario did your group pick and uh, what were some key takeaways? Oh, I'll, I'll go. Um, so we chose scenario two as well. 
and busy schedules was also one of the top of, of our list and our discussion. Um, we kept COVID in there because it still is an obstacle right now for many of us. Um, the familiarity with existing fundraiser equals, you know, of course, resistance to change for, for many club members. Um, it's always the same people volunteering. And then lastly, rethinking an event takes a lot of energy and a lot of involvement from many different minds. Did I forget anything, Kathy or Robin? Nope. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let me uh, pull my screen up here and move ahead. So, yeah, as a, you know, as a, came out of some of the conversations, you know, why do proposed changes fail? Um, you know, a, a coalition of support wasn't built. Um, coming up with a clear vision is really important. And then um, repeating myself here, but, you know, clearly communicating that vision over and over again. Um, one that we didn't talk about was, you know, not planning for the short term. So you, you may have a goal to take your club from point A to point B. However, you know, you may not make it there all in one leap. Uh, maybe it might be a, a, a multi-year transition. So you may need to come up with a, a set of uh, intermediary, intermediary milestones and work with, uh, you know, the, the next president to, to implement your goal. So now we're gonna talk about how to implement your goals and manage the change. So first, um, you've probably seen this before, but the uh, acronym SMART goals. So specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Um, you know, it helps to make sure you have um, a good definition of what you wanna accomplish in your goal. The other one is to develop your implementation team. And uh, they, they recommend that you even include some people who may be potential naysayers um, on that team. So we are going to um, watch a short superhero video. I know it's early in the morning for, for superheroes, uh, but it's a two minute long video. And when we watch this video, I want you to um, look at it through a rotary lens. The video talks about building a team. And I would like uh, you to look for key words or key uh, themes from the video. Um, and I'll ask for some of the ones you heard after, after we watch this video. So let's go into share screen, TV and movies, share, and here goes the video. No sound, Jason. Really? Yeah. No sound today. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let me try stopping the video again. Gosh, yesterday that worked. Yesterday that worked. Um, what did we do differently? Let me try backing up one more time. Zoom life, am I right? Yeah. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll try this again. Ah, I see. No, 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 no. It was uh, facilitator error. So I thought I saw the sound was checked. So my fault. We will we will go back and try this again. Here we go. I'm putting together a team. People with special abilities. Stop right there. I'm in. You are? Just like that? Yeah. I, I need friends. The Flash joins forces with Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Cyborg. And in doing so, we become the greatest superhero team ever. Oh, awesome. Let's talk about the dynamic of this group. <laughs> Never a good moment. Bruce is actively trying to find these 
superhumans that he believes are out there. This is the first time after many years that she starts working in a team again to make the world a better place. There's a very interesting team dynamic. Half man, half machine. Cyborg is the perfect combination of technology and the human heart. Aquaman, he comes from two different worlds. He's human and he's Atlantean. Flash has the ability to experience time more slowly. Honestly, I'm having too much fun. Don't engage alone. We'll do this together. So there we go. Um, go ahead and unmute um, and um, go ahead and share. What are some key themes, words uh, that came out of that video that apply to Rotary and developing your team to implement your goals? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Kirk. Don't engage alone. You need help on this. <laughs> totally, totally. Have heart. Ha have heart? Yes. Special abilities. Yes. You know, uh, Rotary was founded on diversity and special abilities. If you think about it, you bring the, the lawyer, the doctor, uh, the accountant, uh, you know, nurses, um, construction people all together um, to solve problems in our community. Others? Have fun. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> remember, as president elects, uh, you know, make sure you still have fun your year. You know, some presidents have adopted the five-way test or the four-way plus test, which is, is it fun to all concerned? So definitely something to keep in mind. So oh, I've watched this four times and I have two new takeaways this morning. <laughs> One, Bruce was actively trying to find. So, oh. and then secondly, they have a mission, justice for all. Great. That was fun. You know, I, um, oh, go ahead, Gary. Oh, sorry. No, go, go, Gary. No, I was going to say, make the world a better place. So the, the, mm -hmm. we have on there now, which I thought was really cool. Yes, yes. When I um, I saw this video at a conference um, oh, about two years ago, I was prepping for a leadership development um, program at our zone conference that year. And I, I'm like, after I, I saw the video, I went up to the uh, facilitator. I'm like, where's that from? How do I, how do I get that? And luckily it was um, very easily available on the internet. So yeah. Um, you know, the main point of that video is, you know, make sure you don't do it alone and, and build a team, have some, and have some fun. So next, moving on to my next slide. So some key action steps in implementing your goals. Um, you know, make sure you describe what's going to happen, build the case for the change together. Make sure you listen um, carefully to your members um, and try to explain why the goal is necessary. Uh, involve as many people as possible um, so that they can gain buy-in and you know, reach out and ask for suggestions. Another thing is to um, make sure you understand objections and try to uh, address those and clear up mis any misunderstandings you may have. Um, in the lower left-hand one here, communicate the vision again and again. Can't emphasize that enough. And then align organizational structures to support the change. Uh, the Downtown Rotary Club um, wanted to make some large changes, and we've totally revamped our committee structure um, into uh, different groups in different formats. And so we'll be embarking on that uh, change um, this new Rotary year for the first time. So we felt like our existing committee structure wasn't uh, as adapt and ability to make changes, um, maybe a little too, it wasn't as much of a emphasis on taking action. Uh, so we made some, some large changes in our committee structures. Manage the inevitable co conflicts that may come up. And then um, celebrate successes. 
And that's just not the final success. You know, look for um, milestones along the way that you could help um, uh, recognize and celebrate the uh, intermediary, intermediary accomplishments that you have um, achieved. So what I'd like to introduce now is the handout. Um, it, the, I chatted it out at the beginning um, and then Karen also had emailed the handout um, to you before. And this, this handout uh, again was developed um, through the efforts of uh, the uh, district out in the New York area and with some improvements by Dean Ryerson. And then I corrected uh, finally all my spelling errors that I had in it. So, um, and it's a model for change management. It helps walk you through how to um, help define your vision, develop collaborative commitment, um, inventory what skills you may need to implement your goals, provide um, resources that are needed. Again, consider rewarding um, volunteers and key members um, or recognize them as we uh, move along to achieve your goal. And then finally, how important it is to develop an action plan. So what we'd like to do now um, is we're gonna go into another set of breakout rooms, um, this time a little longer. And we are gonna look at the same three scenarios. However, if there was someone in your group that is working on a, uh, uh, an important goal right now that you'd like to discuss, that's okay too. So pick one of the three scenarios or a pressing goal that one of the people in your breakout room has. And I will rechat the, um, I just rechatted the scenarios again. And if you need the handout again, I'll just put that in the chat right now. So what we'd like to do is utilize, utilize the handout um, and in your groups, talk about one of the scenarios and develop a plan to um, implement that, or at least you know as much as you can bullet points on how you might go about implementing the goal that you select. We'll take about um, 12 minutes for this breakout session here, and then we'll come back together um, and uh, you know report out. Karen, Karen is now the host. Um, I think we got everyone back here. Yeah. All right. Um, so um, how about um, we'll go to group number two for the this time. Um, we had Bethany, Shar, and Kathy in group number two. Um, what scenario did your group pick and uh, what were some what were some takeaways from the discussion? We, we chose um, number three, and I think I'm the one that writes things down. So. <laughs> Um, so our action plan would number one be to get the board on board and then number two communicate to the to the full club and survey the club uh, about the idea of going to a bi-weekly meeting. Thirdly, we would create a team or create teams to focus on one technology, two the social programs, three, the service programs, and then uh, the public image or the club and really um, communicating with all club members as well. So some things that we thought were really important would be to keeping it easy for everybody. Um, that would be a success. Having um, full engagement from members, of course, would be a success measure. And then Planning, the next step would be to be planning um, to sustain the change as opposed to having that just be temporary. And then lastly, um, we'd be putting a success recognition plan together. We talked about how a lot of times um, it's easy to um, skip the celebrating of successes and then it gets to be that too much time has gone by. So putting that plan together to make sure that we're on top of that. Bethany, Kathy, anything more? Thanks for um, always talking, but I think you covered it all. <laughs> I think Shar hit a home run there. 
So good job. Um, your group discussed doing a survey, and um, that's something that my club did to help uh, promote some of our racial equity, um, diversity, and inclusion efforts. So by you know surveying the members and confirming that the members were interested in learning more about racial equity and enhancing the diversity and inclusion of our club, helps you sort of reinforce um, that you know that's the common direction that your club wants to go. So a survey can be a very very useful tool. Um, group one was Bob, uh, Brian, and Gary. Uh, what scenario did you guys choose and uh, what were some of the key takeaways? Um, I, I don't, this is Brian. I, I'm not sure we really followed the format. Um, we digressed a little bit. Uh, we started talking, <laughs> we started talking about um, some different um, goals that you know, each of us were looking at. And, mm -hmm. and I brought up the idea, it was kind of a hybrid of scenario number one is that um, be, being a president elect, that was, you know, um, kind of a personal goal that hasn't been communicated yet is to get out and try to grow the club and to build energy. A growing um, club is a vibrant club. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, some of the obstacles I, I know I'm going to face are, you know, we're uh, a traditional club in the sense that, you know, there's, you know, there's a, a number of naysayers and, you know, and again, we didn't discuss this, but one of the things that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to bring one of those people on board right from the get go. And the, the good thing about that is that typically the naysayers are the ones that are so embedded in the community that they know, they know everybody. So they could be a great resource to actually get out and stretch my arms because I don't know everybody um, in the area. I'm relatively new um, in the big picture. So, you know, I have to bring you know, one or two of those on to really be a kind of a champion to this, to introduce me to people and to kind of get the word out and spread the message. Um, you know, and as we're talking about this, um, um, Bob had mentioned too, something very similar, which I'm very interested in um, discussing at the next president's meeting is the Shark Tank concept that um, the, uh, the After Hours Club down in La Crosse has. Um, that's about as far as we got. Um, we didn't put it together anything really special, but um, it, it was a great discussion. No, I think you grabbed a, a number of key points and, um, you know, getting one of those naysayers or, or a couple, you know, on board and helping them become your change agents would, would really help. Um, so, um, yeah, definitely think you, you pulled out some key points uh, from, from the handout there. So let's go to, oh, anyone else from uh, group one want to add anything before I go on? Okay. Uh, group three was Kirk and Robin. And then I think Karen, did you jump in on group three then? So with Kirk, Kirk and Robin. So what, what scenario did group three pick and what were some of your key um, takeaways? Karen asked if we uh, we had anything else that was kind of like an I don't know if I want to say an issue so we kind of jumped we jumped off of the three and uh, one of our issues right now is a change of venue mm. and trying to get outside try, we're going to try to get outside to try to see if we can get more people to come back to the meeting so that was one of the things and, and kind of basically eliminate Zoom because we have so few people that are on Zoom because we've been doing hybrid. So to try to do that, to try to get those people that maybe would like to come back, but to come back if we did a fresh air, fresh air type of source. And we've had some, some uh, issues with that, <laughs> some kickback, I guess I should say. So that's, that's the vision is to eliminate the Zoom and get out into a fresh air type of a meeting place. So um, uh, Basically, we brought up that the collaboration is huge because we need to talk to people and ask them why they're against meeting outside or changing our venue spot. And then uh, in this vision or the skills, I mean, it, it takes a lot of work to get to Zoom to work. It, it just does. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of a uh, lot more, a more, lot more to it than people even realize unless they have to set it up every week. And um, <laughs> and then the other thing, I think the skills, you have to try to keep the Zoom people involved that's that's what we noticed the first few times we did this those people are just like they didn't exist so we needed to like re revise and do everything so that's that's another reason i think zoom is a tough very tough deal so 
and rewards. My, the rewards part of it, I guess, to me is if we finally get to be outside in some fresh air, um, that, that's to me is the big rewards if, if I was going to say anything on that. So that was about as far as we got. So that's, that's I'll, I'll be quiet and I'll let somebody else talk. <laughs> well, I can, um, before I ask if um, Robin had anything else to add, I was going to say it is, it is hard to pull off a good Zoom meeting. And um, even in a smaller group, you know, a hybrid meeting like that, uh, I, my wife is with the uh, Madison After Hours Club. And, uh, you know, they'll have eight people um, in person and maybe another six or eight on the Zoom and, um, you know, getting the microphones right, the video right and everything like that. And like you said, to uh, make people feel like they're interacting um, definitely takes some thought planning and, and equipment and technology. So when, when does your club, uh, Kirk, meet? We were at noon, Tuesday noons. Tuesday we're, noon. We're, we're a lunch, lunch type meal. Type of deal. And that's what we also talked about is uh, a lot of people do not want, I shouldn't say a lot of people, there's a few that think that they don't want to burn any bridges to eliminate our spot that we normally meet. Mm -hmm. So they're worried, I think, that we're, if we move away, that they're going to have a hard time getting back, which I don't believe that would be true because if we tell them why we're meet, leaving, I think they're going to understand. So, sure. Um Sounds interesting. One thing I can say, um, brunch, Sunday brunch, at least, uh, especially with younger people, is very popular. <laughs> so my wife's club tries to do a brunch at least once a quarter. Um, and you can do that. They did during COVID, they did at least two of them outdoors, you know, where people would bring their own stuff and, and set up in a park. So it is eight o'clock. Um, I want to try to wrap up in a few minutes. If anyone has to go, um, I, I totally understand. Um, and thank you for being with us. So let me just pull up my slides again. Um, hey, hey, uh, Jason, oh, I want to sure. interrupt before anybody goes with a critical, Char and her team used the, I, the, the word sustainable. Building your president team, you, your, pres your current president, your president nominee, president uh, nominee elect, if you're so lucky to have it. Um, that is really, really helpful when you're trying to make changes because if you're doing it together it can grow throughout the years and and uh, your district dg team is working very hard on that and it's it's fun but boy you really have to be intentional because it's so easy to take shortcuts thanks jason great karen thank you um yeah, building your team, uh, like I mentioned with my club, um, some of our uh, diversity and inclusion efforts will span three or four presidents uh, to try to implement those. So a couple things. Um, the Rotary Learning Center um, has a specific class on leading change. So, uh, and there's, you know, probably a hundred some classes in there. So I encourage you to check out the Rotary Learning Center. Um, you need to be logged into my Rotary and then you can get to that. Uh, also, the strategic planning guide is in there. If you may have seen that before, and they have a um, template for a um, membership survey. So Shar talked about surveying the members, and you know um, that might have been a, a more uh, defined survey. But if you want to do a general survey of your club, um, there's a template that you could draw questions from um, in the. Um, uh, my Rotary part of the uh, website. So um, with that, you know, really encourage you to take action and implement your goals. Thank you all for taking on leadership positions in your club. Think about what um, your post-section, post-section, I can't talk this morning, post-session action items are. Uh, what goals do you have for your club? Who can you recruit to be your change agents? And then Again, what, what other Rotary resources do you want to seek out? Um, they're not just online. You know, your AGs are there to help you, um, other fellow club, club presidents, uh, your, your district governor, um, and even myself. So um, I'll put my contact info in there. If you want to run some scenarios or thoughts by me, um, I'm, I'm here to help you there. Uh, so with that, um, um, any final questions or uh, wrap up thoughts. I'll remove the spotlight and um, yeah, go ahead and unmute. Um, any other thoughts or questions?
I have a question around approach. Um, so, you know, you have a club, they meet once a week for an hour. People are busy, they get there right on time for the meeting, they leave at the end. Um, is the approach that people take typically through committees to start the change as opposed to trying to get the entire club involved? Gary, I think um, most change that I've seen, you know, president or a committee has an idea and then you, you sort of work on it in that, that small group, mm -hmm. but you do need to, um, for example, do the surveys or hold list listening sessions. Sure. Uh, for instance, on our, some of our changes in downtown Madison, uh, we had announcements at the podium. We held two different uh, Zoom, you know, uh, listening sessions so, so people could feel free to ask questions about changes that were coming up. And, oh, you know, I don't know if your club does a newsletter, you know, but you could just email things out to members. So I think communicating in different ways at different times um, can be helpful. But usually it does start in, you know, in a, a, a smaller group of people and grows from there. The board meeting often. Right, is right. a classic place where the leaders are and um, can discuss and make plans for changes. But I think don't just, you know, especially if your board is a smaller representation of your club, I think it's helpful to get, you know, a, a broader group of uh, member buy-in. It doesn't have to be the whole club, but recruit some change agents who are not um, on the board currently to sort of expand the, your champions for implementing your goals. Right. I was stating the obvious there because what we're learning in this class is you need more than that. But I was stating where it starts. But where it starts. Yeah. I do have a quick Thanks. question for Karen and perhaps anybody here is that how frequently are your boards meeting, your leadership board, and kind of what's the format? Because that's something that would be relatively new to us is, you know, because that's one of the things I want to establish as well is to kind of have, when we have a finance committee, I'm looking at, I want to have like a leadership and planning committee, and, and maybe that's just the board, but I, you know, we haven't, what, what's the expectation or what's the thoughts, what everybody else is doing? Show of hands if you if your board meets monthly. Almost always it's going to be monthly. Well, we okay. also have committee meetings um, yep. at least, well, probably every other month. Mm -hmm. Brian, if you want to talk one on one, I'd be very happy to have a one on one conversation. All right. I had a meeting tonight, so I'm going to present this to, you know, certainly are the president elect, the outgoing mm -hmm. president, and our stuff. And I actually have a finance mm -hmm. committee too. So there'll be a number of those folks. So I'm going to get some thoughts. So yeah, good luck. Thanks. You know, uh, something to keep in mind, you know, um, Gary, you mentioned people, you know, coming in and out real close to Rotary, busy lives. Uh, I think one thing that COVID has changed is, you know, committee meetings, board meetings, they don't have to occur before or after Rotary. We have Zoom now. And, uh, you know, a lot of those meetings could happen at, you know, different times that are, are more convenient for the, the group of people working on that initiative. So, you know, even if we go fully back into person in-person meetings, I feel like there's a, a great role to still utilize uh, Zoom for for committee and board meetings um, <laughs> like this two years ago I would never have imagined this and here we are all together Bob did you have a comment well one of the things I'm suggesting lacrosse east and it's it's out there um, but our board meetings I would like to see be more like a city council meeting where the entire club for the people that want to attend can attend they can have input they just don't have a vote but this will become more inclusive this way more ideas will be, you know, used by from the members. Uh, and I think it'll just make everybody more engaged. And so I think we're going to give that a try. I'm working on that. Kind of like public hearings. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Just yeah. get everybody involved somehow. Bob, we, do we, that invi we do that now. We invite the entire club oh. to the board if they if they wish to attend. Good. I'm going to talk to you later, Gary. Yeah. And Bob, um, downtown Madison, um, new members are invited to a board meeting within their first year, year and a half. So they at least get to see what the board is and how it operates. So that's another um, idea. Well, great. Um, 
I got to run off to my uh, engineering job. So um, sure, I want to thank everyone for being here and uh, thank Karen for inviting me. I know, you know, Karen will probably thank me for doing this, but I, I do appreciate the opportunity. I, uh, I got into this. I was really impacted by pets. I went twice. No, I didn't fail. I just went as the nominee and then I went as the uh, president elect. So pets was really impactful to me. Uh, and at a cocktail party um, down in Janesville, actually, um, I mentioned the wrong person, Dean Ryerson, that I wanted to help out, you know, in pets in some way, shape or form. And next thing you know, boom, I'm there. <laughs> so I've really enjoyed um, uh, facilitating at pets, both in person and virtual now, um, and some of the other opportunities and uh, really like to enjoy giving back um, and helping you start off your presidential journeys. So with that, um, uh, everyone have a good day and um, hopefully we'll see you um, at an in-person or rotary zoom soon. <laughs> Thank you Thanks, everyone.